Uh, now I'm going to start. Sound is now clear. And if you have any query, you can drop your question in the chat box. Thank you, guys. This transaction, the first thing we should know is that it is based on a contract. Yes, any business transaction is based on a contract. This is the most important feature of a contract. This is the most important feature of a business transaction where we need a valid agreement which is expressed or implied between the parties. What is a valid agreement? It is nothing but a contract under the Indian Contract Act. What are the sources of mercantile law? Let us look at it. So the main sources are the statute law, that is the acts like Companies Act and all that, the common law, which was always prevalent, principles of equity, law merchant. This is broadly what we call as the sources from where we learn the mercantile law. Let us look at the law in India. Prior to 1872, mercantile transactions were regulated by the law of the parties to the suit, that is Hindu law, Mohammedan law, whatever. So if the businessman was Hindu, Hindu law was applicable. So in 1872, the first attempt was made to codify and to make it an Indian Contract Act 1872. That is when we have a separate law for all business transactions and all kinds of contracts and agreements. So after the Indian Contract Act, we have Partnership Act, Sale of Goods Act, Negotial Instruments Act and multiple laws have come. So now we can say we have a whole set of laws which we can call as mercantile laws. In India, what is the sources of Indian mercantile law? We have the English mercantile law, acts enacted by the Indian legislature, judicial decisions, customs and trade usages all this we call as the sources of indian mercantile law let us look at that in detail so mainly the english system we know very well british was ruling us and that is why most of our law has been adopted by british there are certain modifications wherever necessary and they have been incorporated it is mainly related to local customs and usages for Indian condition. So whatever is for Indian condition, we have adopted it. Let us look at the acts enacted by the Indian legislature or what we call the statute law. This is the second source. We have Indian Contract Act, Sale of Goods Act, the Partnership Act, Negotiable Instruments, Arbitration Conciliation, Insurance Act. All these are the sources which comes under acts enacted by Indian legislature. Next, we come to judicial decisions or what we call as case laws. Case laws are very important because the judges interpret the law and they will bring a decision, a judgment. And it would be accepted in most system of law that cases which are identical should be also made their decisions so that the case will not waste the time of the court. So already one case is decided. After two years, similar case comes, why should we waste time? We can just adopt the precedent that is what we call judicial precedent of the previous case, as simple as that. So that principle ensures justice for the individual claimant and measure of certainty for the law itself. That is why we should always use old cases wherever relevant, not to waste the time of the court and also to save the time of the parties. Next, we come to customs and trade usages. Most of the Indian law have been codified. That means it is in form of an act. Codified means it is form of act. But even then, it is not altogether done away with customs and usages. Many Indian statutes make specific provisions to the effect that the rules of law laid down in a particular act are subject to any special custom or usage of trade. So that is what is the custom or trade usages which have already been in practice. So whatever is already been in practice that also becomes a source of mercantile law. So what are their sources? English law, uh, the Indian uh, acts, judicial decisions that is case law and the customs and trade usages which we have already been using. Now let us come to 
jurisprudence this is important in fact name of the subject is jurisprudence interpretation general laws so jurisprudence what is it juris means law and prudence means knowledge very simple the prudence which you have about the law the knowledge which you have about the law is broadly the study of jurisprudence so juris is law and prudence is knowledge so the proper knowledge of the law we also call jurisprudence as legal theory jurisprudence can also be called as legal theory so study of the science of law jurisprudence is a very beautiful subject don't ask sir which act is it this is legal theory these are principles of law which you should know this is applicable in all circumstances very basic that is why in executive this is subject number 1 jurisprudence in that lesson number 1 what is law if you know what is law you can study all the laws company law sbc economic commercial law tax laws if you see entire company secretary course we are studying different laws even tax is laws right tax laws income tax act gst all these are laws so you should know the basic jurisprudence that is legal theory the science of the law study of law in jurisprudence is not about any particular statute or a rule but a law in general that is what i'm telling don't ask which act is this sir it is law in general its concepts its principles and the philosophies underpinning it so whatever is the philosophy the concept and principles this is what we study in jurisprudence please understand underpinning a set of ideas motives or devices which justify or form basis for something this is what we study in jurisprudence according to salmon the term jurisprudence means science where the word law includes all species of obligatory rules of human action he said that jurisprudence in this sense can be further divided into civil international and natural now professor julius stone defined jurisprudence as the lawyer's extra version so there are different people telling different things like salmon is a very big authority and salmon is saying that the term jurisprudence means science where the word law includes all species obligatory rules of human action so this is generally what the law is and we can have civil international and natural when we study the jurisprudence so i told you jurisprudence we also call it as legal theory so juris and prudence so i told you already juris is law and prudence is knowledge so knowledge of the law what is legal theory let us have a look at it positive legal theory it will explain what is the law and why is the law that way and how laws affect the world this we call as the positive legal theory normative legal theory it tells us what the law ought to be how it should be how it should be now concerned with law as it exists and functions in society the way in which the law is created and enforced how and what is the procedure procedure to make the law that is what we understand in our legal theory what is the procedure to make the law as already told positive and the normative legal theory so positive talks about explain what is the law and normative is tell us what the law ought to be so these are the two most famous other theory these are sociological theory economic theory historical theory critical legal theory so these are the other theories of law or what we can also call as the philosophy of law this is a very general thing you should know all these basics very well now let us come to john austin's command theory of law what does he tell austin differentiated between law properly so called and laws improperly so called and said that laws properly so called are general commandments that uh, but not all of it is given by men for men austin has propagated that law is a sovereign law is of sovereign a command which imposes a duty and failure to fulfill the duty is met with sanctions so what are we trying to understand over here law is a sovereign command which imposes a duty and the failure to fulfill the duty is met with sanctions or what we call punishment 
So according to Austin, there is a law. If you and you need you need to follow the law. Okay. If you don't follow the law, you have a punishment. This is as simple as what Austin is telling. So he told law properly so called and laws improperly so called. and said that laws properly so called are general commands but not all of it is given by men for men this is his theory so he is saying law is there you need to follow if you don't follow there is a punishment law has three main features it is a command it is given by sovereign authority when we say sovereign it means government in india it can be central government or state government because in india central government and state government both can make the law this is important for us to know and it has a sanction behind it that is if there is violation we need to punish the people who has not followed the law this is broadly the three features which is given by the austin's theory this is important for us to understand next we have rosco pound theory of law what is law according to him rosco pound also has given a similarity between the task of a lawyer and an engineer and gave his theory of social engineering what is social engineering the goal of this theory was to build such a structure of society where satisfaction of maximum of wants was achieved with minimum friction and waste such a society according to rosco pound would be an efficient society he told we can have a society where everybody gets what they want and there is minimum friction between whatever is happening and there is very little wastage now for any legal order to be successful in structuring an efficient society so society there has to be first recognition of certain interests individual public and social a definition of the limits within which such interest will be legally recognized and securing of those interest within the limits as defined so these are the three important things so first we will tell what are the interest of the individual then the limits within which the interest will be legally recognized and securing those interest within the limits so this is we can have an efficient society according to rosco pound theory rosco pound theory classify interest in three following individual interest public interest and social interest now next we come to john william salmon theory salmon was a theorist of normative school because salmon claimed that purpose of law was deliverance of justice to the people and in this sense he differed from the bentham and austin who went into the analysis of law without going into its purpose so here we mainly study what is the purpose of law according to john william salmon here he says that law is the body of principles which are recognized and applied by the state in the administration of justice so again he is telling about purpose he is telling mainly about why we have law his other definition said that law consists of set of rules recognized and acted in the court of justice so again he is talking about the order in society how the society should function properly next we come to the concept of hans kelsen's pure theory of law pure science of law he suggested that law is related to politics sociology metaphysics and all other extra legal discipline he rejected austin's definition that law is a command he introduced the subjective consideration where he wanted it as a objective so this is what we call as the theory of interpretation so he always looked into the objective side of law and not just that law is a command which was told by austin normative science is what he has told he described law as normative science that is different from the natural science please understand which are based on things like law of gravitation so natural science is different normative science is different what is natural science gravity law of natural science are capable of being accurately described but we cannot describe the law accurately according to him science of law is knowledge of what law ought to be or it ought character but provides normative character example a commit theft 
he ought to be punished. So, if Mr. A commits theft, he has to be punished. That is what is the science of law which ought to be. Like Austin, Kelson also considers sanction as an essential element, but he prefers to call it as a norm. So, what he is telling here basically, if somebody has done a mistake, he should be caught. So, that is what is called normative science. Jeremy Bentham's theory of law. He was the pioneer of analytical jurisprudence. According to him, law may be defined as an assemblage of science declarative of violation conceived or adopted by a sovereign in a state concerning the conduct to be observed in a certain case by a certain person or a class of person who in case or in question are supposed to be subject to his power. So Bentham's concept of law is imperative one. Bentham said every law may be considered in eight different respects. First is what is the source of the law? The source of the law will tell us the will of the government and the legislature. Second is the subjects. These are the persons or things. Each of this may be active or passive. That is agent with which an act commences or terminates. Next, the third one is objects. What is the goal of the law? Fourth one is extent. Direct extent means that a law covers a portion of land on which the act have been termination or indirect extent refers to relation of an actor to a thing. That is the fourth one. Aspects. What are the aspects? Directive and sanctional part. This is what is the law which is there and this has to be a part of the theory which is propounded by Bentham. He is considering law into eight different respects. Then the sixth one is force, the motivation to obey the law. Then remedial appendage. This set of the subsidiary laws addressed to the judges through which the judges cure the evil. And the eighth one is expression. A law is the ultimate in expression of a sovereign's will and a connection with the will raises the problem of discovering the will from the expression. So this is the eight ways in which he is uh, dividing the law. So this is the uh, this is the today's session on sources of law by C. S. Alok sir. I have sent this Telegram channel link and our WhatsApp group link. You guys can join these links for such sessions. You will get notified through cha these channels. I'm saying once again. So yeah, this is all about today's session. Uh, we will continue th uh, these uh, daily live session from Monday onwards. At the same time, you can come if you are intermediate student. We always do 6.30 uh, sessions for intermediate ses uh, students, whether it is CA Inter, CMA Inter and CS Executive. So you can join at this time and also you can get notified through these channels. So thank you guys. Thank you very much.